What's up guys, I want to give you some background information on this video. Now I shot this in Norway during the Holgers event. I was watching a presentation by this gentleman, Fabrizio, who you'll, who you'll see in a minute, and it was about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes long, and it blew my mind. Uh, it was specifically on gloss. Why are cars shiny? Why are we attracted to shiny things? And I was just like, oh, we have to get this on camera. So I asked him in between sessions, hey, Fabrizio, come over here. Let's sit down. We did a one take, one camera shoot, um, and I said, take that hour and 20 minutes and pff, compress it into you know, 10, 12 minutes and explain why we, we love this shine as human beings. Um, and so the point of me uh, kind of hopping on beforehand is when you're watching this, think, hey, how can I take this information and speak to my customer a particular way, a certain way that, um, that shows the level of care that we have and the obsessive uh, you know, shine, right? So, when somebody comes in, they say, hey, I want a shiny car. You're not just gonna go like, hey, yeah, sure, we can shine it up. We're gonna explain to them. What do you mean by shine? You mean remove the haze, distinctive image, all these things that Fabrizio talked, it's, it's, just let it soak in. Like I said, it's like 12 minutes long or what have you, but um, I really think this information can help you uh, in your business, especially having that conversation and make the customer feel comfortable with your level of knowledge. Uh, it's, it's just a really nice nugget of information, so uh, enjoy. What's up, guys? On today's episode, we're going to be talking with my man here, Fabrizio. Yes, yeah, sort, sort of like that. Yeah, okay, I got it. Uh, Fabrizio. Fabrizio. Oh, oh. And we're going to be talking about the bias for gloss. What does that mean? It's a, uh, uh, you know, why we like cars glossy. And this is uh, you're a PhD, right? Yes, and I'm a chemist. You're a chemist. So I've always been working on surfaces and paints and. Right, and before I forget, he is the training manager for the Bigfoot Academy and. Italy. In Italy. Rupus? Yes. Italy, right? Rupus. Oh, see, look at that. I got it again. Right. All right, so um, at the Norway convention that we just had here, you did, uh, I don't know, about an hour talk on gloss, and it was absolutely fantastic. So Thank much you. so that I said, we have to put this on camera and show everybody around the world okay. why us detailers are so obsessed with gloss. Now, the first thing is, Human beings are obsessed by gloss, and they discovered that the real reason is not because gloss is beautiful, it's not because gloss is cool, it's not a question of society, it's just a question of our ancestorship, our history, our evolution. So in the past, prehistorical people, they had to fight and strive to get water, to find water. And water is probably one of the few natural elements that are glossy. Right, right. So uh, where uh, the people that were able to find water, even probably at the end of the savanna or um, far in the desert and so on, they had more possibility to survive. Of course. Okay, so uh, during our evolution, only the people that was able to find water uh, was strong enough to resist. And to right, so it's like genetically survive. in us that like shiny equals survival. Yes, it's or innate glossy. In, our, in us the need to look up for gloss objects. <laughs> objects remember to us water and we want water. Even babies, there have been studies, right. babies spend much more time uh, playing with the glossy objects than with matte objects. A bowl, a doll can be whatever. Oh, and the, the pacifier they, you were saying. Yeah, yeah they yeah. Tr tend to put them in the mouth right. because they find it's similar to water, so they want to, to drink. So when we look at a glossy objects. car, it's not just like, oh, it's pretty, it's, it's actually innate in yes. us, which is, yes. I was like, oh my gosh, we were sitting there talking about that going, this is incredible. Yes. So. Now, um, how to evaluate a glossy surface? Glossy is only one aspect of the total quality of a surface. We have a lot of other parameters that we have to consider and that are, I will not say more important, but at least as important as gloss is. I am talking now about especially haze, right. the DOI, DOI means distinctness of image, and the orange peel. So we have four main elements that we have to consider all together to be able to evaluate the quality of a surface. Now what is gloss? Gloss is the quantity of light that is reflected by a surface with the same incident angle. Right. So we have a light, a source of light from one side. It will hit the surface. It will be reflected with the same angle. Understood. And it will arrive to hit our eyes. Uh, got it. That's gloss. Mm -hmm. So it's just a measure of the quantity of light that is reflected by the by the surface. Right. And I think I think us as detailers and, and people who are I see a glossy car and they go, 
It means it's shiny. It means all those things into yeah. one. And so yeah. I love that we're unraveling the actual definition and people watching at home who are detailers, I think their brains are gonna explode. That's what I was doing before. And if you can describe that, I feel like from a detailing perspective to a client, do you understand the value that you look like yeah, sure. to a customer? Like, sure. So it's much more than just gloss and shine. It's a great sales tool. It can be just easy trick yeah. to measure the glossy of a surface of a car before doing the job mm -hmm. and measuring it again after. Mm -hmm. You will have, normally we did just be before some tests, right. 15, to 10, uh, 15 to 20 more units right. gloss. Okay, So it could be a good advantage to demonstrate. Of I course. did the job and I did it good. Right. Now, uh, there are a couple of things that, a couple of myths about gloss. Right. The first is the angle. People normally do not know that you can measure a gloss with three different angles, but they are not the same. You must use the specific one according to the gloss level of your surface. So uh, 85 degrees for low gloss matte surfaces, so almost horizontally, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 60 degrees, so in the middle for middle gloss levels, and 20 degrees, so almost perpendicular kind of, for kind of like this. high, yeah, yeah, for high gloss surfaces. Mm -hmm. So for a detailer, normally the gloss meter should have, must have the 20, and should could have all, on, all, only the 20. Yeah, see, that's the issue. That's what I learned from this, and I wanted to get it on camera. Is I'm using a 60 right now. Yes, and I'm seeing some, but I'm not really. And that's when I was talking to you. I'm yes. like, we got to get this on camera. Uh, we can see the, 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 the explanation, the physical explanation of this. If you take a certain number of samples with increasing gloss values, mm -hmm. you will have that the 60 degrees is uh, uh, more vertical in the middle, but it's very flat when you have low gloss and high gloss. Understood. So you are not able to differentiate the value of gloss with these different uh, samples. Yeah, so the if 60 are, is good in the middle, but yes. poor on the low end, matte end and pour on the yes. super shiny, meaning yes. the cars. So instead, 60 is not good. Instead, what works well at high levels of gloss is the 20. 20, got 20 it. angle, 20 degrees, uh, will be very rapid in, in this region, in right. the high gloss region. And so you will be able to understand differences, even uh, small differences, when working with high gloss surfaces. Right, so the bottom line for everybody watching is the 20 degree angle for detailers in cars is, is the angle that we're going Absolutely. for. Yeah, so Absolutely. that's that's definitely a mistake Absolutely. that I was corrected by you, so good. The second mistake that a lot of people do is to think at the gloss as a percentage. Gloss is not a percentage. There's not a limit. Uh, we normally use gloss meters that are um, parametered um, using a black glass. This black glass will uh, reflect roughly a 10% of the incoming ref um, radiation. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to go beyond 10%. So when we measure then a paint or a plastic, whatever, it will be difficult to go beyond 100. But if we take instead and consider a metal surface, like uh, typically a mirror, that is a metal with something on top, with yeah. uh, some yeah. gl uh, glass on top. On top yeah. It could be even one thousand or two thousand mm -hmm. gloss. So one hundred isn't the limit, is what you One hundred is not a limit. Yeah. It is normally. It's a nice way of thinking about it. It's, oh, yes. it's a hundred percent. You know that yes, kind of thing. It's not percent. Right. It's a hundred. Yes. It's a number. Yes. It's a value. Nothing more. Nothing less. That's another we education. Could, we might have a, a, a detailer doing a paint, doing a car, doing a, a detailing job, that will reach slightly more than 100. Not much more, but 102, 103, especially with the metal paints. Right. Metallic paints, what the they have a shiner right. effect. So in this case, you might have a higher value of gloss. But anyway, it's not a, a percentage. It's Understood. not a limit. The uh, second element that we have to consider when evaluating the quality of a paint is the haze. What is haze? Hades is uh, uh, the quantity of uh, uh, radiation that is reflected with an angle that is very similar to the incident one, but is not exactly the same. So gloss is measured with a tolerance of 0 0.9 degrees. Instead, Hades is with 2.7 degrees. Okay. 
This will give us a hazy effect, a milky effect, just like a whitening right. appearance. Not beautiful to see. It's, let's say, a little bit of a problem. Right. Uh, it's normally given by some components on uh, uh, the paint, but it can give, be given by, for example, a sanding process. Mm -hmm. So if we sand a paint with a 3000, for example, we might create a haze effect. Then we have to work to reduce this haze, to go back to the initial stage, polishing right, with right. the compound, right, with the right, finer right. compound, with polish, with waxes. We will reduce the haze and the glass will be always the same. So this is what I meant before when saying gloss is only one aspect. Right. We have also haze. Haze is very ugly to see. Sure. But uh, it doesn't affect, or at least very small effect, on the glossy value. So this is the second effect, okay. the, the second thing that we have to consider. Uh, I think that the most significant value that we can have from a, from a tool measuring the quality of a surface is the distinctness of image. Now, distinctness of image considers three different parameters, and it is contrast, the uh, ratio between light areas, light colored areas, white, and the blacks or okay. dark colored yeah, areas. I see that. The best it is the contrast, the best I will see the original colors of the mirrored image. Mm -hmm. The second one is precision. So, how precise is the uh, separation, the border between dark and light areas? And the second one is clarity. So how clear I see this image. These three parameters, these three elements, are very important for the evaluation of a surface. And they will give us the real idea of how clearly I see the mirrored image. So this is a very important, I think that most of the people do not know the existence of the DOI, distinctness of image, but it's a very important parameter to understand the real quality of my job. If you want to have a number for orange peel, you have to pay a lot of money because tools that measure it are very right. So like manufacturers and dealerships. Yeah, and normally like it's only big manufa car yeah. manufacturers that own this kind of machinery devices. Yeah. Uh, but you can find they're not cheap, but you can find uh, instruments that give you gloss, haze, and uh, uh, DOI. All right. And you start to have a good idea of the quality that you got with your work. So for people job. at home watching, um, I guess uh, if we could sum it up into one sentence and correct me if I'm wrong, is gloss is measured with multiple things, not just, hey, how shiny the car is. There's, there's haze in there, there's uh, DOI, um, distinctive, uh, distinct of image. It's, it's a difficult. It's a difficult to say in English you, too. You can imagine <laughs> for me. <laughs> and orange peel. So basically, what we're saying is, um, from a PhD perspective, there's a, a, a multiple factors that go into what generates a glossy or beautiful car. Yeah, beautiful quality. It's a quality question of car. quality. So knowing, I think, having just a little bit, you're not going to, you know, be a PhD level over a 15-minute video or what have you. But knowing that there's other aspects going into this detailing, I think it. Um, it sparks uh, imagination, it sparks, oh, I want to read more about this kind of thing, so it's good. And uh, I think if you can speak that language to your customer, they'll go like, oh my gosh, this guy really wants to make my car shiny and ultimately, uh, you know, create a good business in the whole nine yards. So yeah, sure. I appreciate you coming on and chatting. This was it's very been cool. A pleasure for me. Hopefully this was uh, entertaining and learning a, a bunch of stuff. If you have any questions, of course, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com and see my buddy here on tour around the world in training, right? Are you doing some training? <laughs> training uh, at Rupes, and you can uh, find Rupes at rupes.com, right? Rupes.com. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.